Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's quickly begin this video for today. Guys, as you know that we have already launched our live courses for RBS Abhinabad, which you, you, if you want to know more about the courses, you can scroll uh, the application of ours as well as the website of ours. Okay, so the application is downloadable. You can download it and try your hand at the app because we have many more things on the application. Besides, we have this number where you can call from Monday to Saturday, 9 to 6 p.m. You can also drop a mail to us at any time. And this is our website. If you want to know more about us, you can visit the website. Plus, we have discussions.anujindal.in forum as well, where you can directly post your queries and we directly look into the queries and resolve them. So these are the channels that are there for all of you to connect with us. So don't wait if you have any query in your preparation or anything. If you need our guidance, you can uh, reach to us through these many channels. Okay. Now one more thing guys that the telegram channel, the link of which is in the description below there. I have already provided you the PDF. So download the PDF, keep it beside you and then try to learn what I'm teaching you here. Okay. So. I hope that uh, by now you all must have downloaded the PDF. So I'm beginning with the questions. The first question is at which IIT's campus is India's first autonomous navigation facility named Tihan located. So here guys the right answer is IIT Hyderabad. Now first of all what is the meaning of this navigation facility or what does it exactly mean? So, this is guys India's first autonomous navigation facility which will help basically in testing the navigation facilities. We have navigation uh, facilities like GPS system and many more facilities in the vehicles itself. In the mobile app also we have Google Maps that is also a navigation facility. So all such kind of technologies will now be tested on this test bed okay so this is basically a testing facility to test new navigation technologies and it is located at iit hyderabad so that is all about this news uh, one more thing that the technologies would be tested in both aerial and terrestrial mode now the meaning of this is that we have the GPS system or the navigation system installed in the airplane as well as in the car. But the functioning of both the systems are different. So how effective is the functioning of these systems that would be tested on this uh, test bed. Okay, so aerial technologies and terrestrial technologies both will be tested. So that much is enough I guess from your exam point of view because we are the banking aspirants not the science students. So we are not required to go into too much of its depth. So let's restrict ourselves to this much. Moving ahead, the next question is, uh, which company has signed an agreement with IIT Hyderabad to launch India's first dedicated school for sustainable science and technology? So here guys, again, uh, we have the IIT Hyderabad involved with Greenco Group. So these two organizations have collaborated and they are now going to establish a school for sustainable science and technology. And do you know what is the name of this school? Greenco School for Sustainable Science and Technology, GSSST. This is the name of this school. Now do remember it's school but it does not uh, welcome children. It welcomes the students who have cleared their masters and who have cleared their PhD. Okay. PhD scholars or masters wale log hi allowed hai is school mein admission lene ke liye. Now what is the purpose of this school? Obviously from the very name itself, it is the school that will help in researching ways to boost the sustainable development. Okay, sustainable science and technology. That is the name of the school. So that is the purpose also. Okay. So here it is written that it will help in plugging the gaps in research. Oh, uh, give me a second. Education and skills in the sustainable development space. Something more about it, about this is that this, uh, for this particular school, Greenco is working with Ministry of Education, which is but obvious, then AICTE, NCRT and National Council for Vocational Education and Training. So all of these are partnering for this school. Okay, I hope that now it is clear. Moving ahead. What is the name of the new chipset developed by Indian Institute of Science, uh, Bangalore? Okay, so here you have the five options out of which Aryabhat first is the right answer. 
Now guys, such questions are asked very obviously in your examination. So you are required to keep uh, an eye over the science and technology section. Okay, so this is a new chipset that has been developed by the Indian Institute of Science and the chipset is basically used in your electronic devices. Okay, so the very peculiar feature of this chipset is that it requires less energy. Okay, so it is sustainable in that sense. Okay, so it requires less power than the digital chips found in most electronic devices. Now, one more important fact about this news is that this Aribut 1 chipset is a part of a greater framework. So basically, the students or the researchers, I should say it, researchers of the Indian Institute of Science have developed a framework under which they are going to develop more and more such chips that are very efficient in terms of power consumption. So that is the basic idea of this uh, Aryabhat chip and the framework. Okay. Now do remember Aryabhat also has a full form. Analog reconfig uh, reconfigurable technology and bias scalable hardware for AI task. This is the full form of this new chipset. Okay, so I have already told you the purpose of the framework as well as the functioning of the chip. Now do remember the chip has been designed by Pratik Kumar, a PhD scholar at IISC. So the name of this person is very important from your exam point of view. So the next question that we have is, uh, which state has organized the investors first port of call, investors conclave, which is guys the largest investor conclave so far. So here the right answer is Tamil Nadu. Now before moving into the details of this news, let me inform you that investor uh, or the investment conclaves that are organized by many states by now, uh, we have Gujarat organizing the vibrant Gujarat, we have the Uttar Pradesh Lucknow Investment Summit was also organized Uttar Pradesh mein. and then we have Jammu Kashmir Investment Summit also coming up. So all these kinds of investment summits that the state which the states are organizing are very important. Okay, just keep an eye over them. Now let's have a look at this summit as well or the conclave. Okay, so 60 MOUs. Now First of all, don't try to memorize the MOUs, okay? And I also don't provide you that in the spotlight. It is just the number that I have provided for your information, okay? And I don't think that uh, the examiner is going to ask you the number of MOUs that were signed in a particular investment summit of a state. That would, uh, that is, guys, very meekly possible. But, but the proposed investment that was committed in the summit can be asked. So this much is the proposed investment from these 60 MOUs. So 1.25 lakh crore is sought by Tamil Nadu uh, from the investors. Now one more thing has happened during the summit or the conclave. Uh, the thing is that the state government has launched a new platform for startups, which is TN Pitchfest. So TN is Tamil Nadu and Pitchfest is the name of this uh, platform. Moving ahead, so we are on our fifth question of the day. Uh, which state has become the first state in the country to connect its one district, one product mart with the open network for digital commerce platform? Now, uh, I don't know how are you perceiving this question, but in my opinion, this is a very important question because this is a very ambitious project of the government of India and which ministry is exactly behind this project. This is your first question of the day, which I have asked you in the middle of the video. So that is a great achievement of mine. Don't you agree? Okay, so coming back to the question. So uh, now we have Uttar Pradesh, which has linked its one district, one product mart. Okay, so basically it's an online uh, platform where the particular products are sold. Okay, so this platform has been linked with this project. Now, what does this project mean or what is the basic objective of this project? I have already told you many times in the videos previously, but if you haven't seen that, so let me inform you that this ONDC is basically an e-commerce platform. 
that would on board the retailers okay small retailers as well uh, on its platform and allow them to reach a wider audience okay i hope that you are getting it if you are not getting the idea of ondc then also mention it in the comment section i will try to explain it in the next video okay so in my opinion that is a really easy explanation i think you must have understood it by now okay so that is the basic idea of ondc and now the products of this mart will be sold on this platform or basically this is the facilitator of this platform now let's move into the detail of this news so one district one product mart i hope that guys you have covered the one district one product scheme of the government of india which is a really important scheme so do cover it and this is guys also contributing towards your rural development which is a very integral part of your art okay so all those nabard students hearing me out right now please cover this scheme thoroughly okay so this online platform has been integrated with this open network for digital commerce which obviously would give a wider audience to the odop mart okay so the url or the link of this platform is odopmart.com which has been integrated with the ondc platform so far this much is the news and i hope that all of you know that this platform is in itself in the making it has not been launched yet so by integration what does it mean it means that whenever this uh becomes complete this become this is finalized the products that are sold on this platform will also be available on this platform so that is the meaning of this integration right moving ahead where is india's first fully solar powered dairy plant being developed so guys it is being developed at arnakulam district in kerala okay so that much is enough from your exam point of view and again art ke liye bahut important hai dairy is a part of art so the next question is uh, which satellite is being used by the artificial intelligence based change detection software of directorate general defense state for detecting unauthorized construction and encroachment so here the right answer is carto set 3 now what is the news all about so guys this directorate general defense states which is basically responsible for managing the affairs of the containment boards right so it has uh, launched the artificial intelligence based change direction uh, detection software and what is the purpose of this software this software will basically detect the unauthorized construction and encroachments on the defense land using the satellite imagery okay so not only the containment boards but all the defense land the land that belongs to the defense sector is managed by this dgde and now with this new system dgde is going to monitor the encroachments on the defense land that is the basic idea behind this new system now do remember that this has been developed by the system has been developed by center of excellence on satellite and unmanned remote vehicle initiative very important information which is located at national institute of defense estates management in merit again a very important fact so there are two facts in this one statement which are very important do remember the facts it has developed it and it is located at this institute now one more information regarding this software only that is bhaba atomic research center is the knowledge partner of this center of excellence in developing this software and presently the software is using the cartosat 3 imagery cartosat in itself is a satellite now i am giving you a homework you need to study or read more about the cartosat 3 satellite since it is in the news high chances are there you can expect a question now when was it launched why was it launched and what is exactly is its function that is your homework okay and again don't go into too much of its depth okay again that is not required bas overview chahiye aapko utna hi required hai aur utna hi main aapse keh rahi hu utna karke aana theek hai
Okay, the next question is with which country has India signed an MOU for facilitating high impact community uh, development projects? So here Armenia is the right answer. So uh, eighth India Armenia Intergovernmental Commission on Trade, Economic, Scientific and Technological, Cultural, Educational Cooperation. So this is basically a forum that was held and during this forum, this MOU was signed. So basically now India is going to provide assistance to Armenia for developing the high impact development projects, the uh, social de the development projects that have a high impact in the social economic arena. So that is the basic idea of this. Now, right now it is being organized. It was held at the capital of Armenia. The pre previous session, that is the seventh session of this commission was held in 2016. So that is all about this news. I think we are pretty good at it. Now we don't have to go into too much of it. Okay, now we have a very, very important question. So do listen to me carefully. Which of the following statement is not, not true about the first ever state ranking index for NFSA? So here we have the three statements and two uh, very, uh, I would say, difficult options. So first statement is the NFSA coverage, targeting and provisions of the act pillar of the index has 15% weightage. Odisha has stopped and Ladakh has ranked at the bottom in the overall ranking. The rankings for the third pillar that is nutrition initiatives are not available. Which of these statements do you think are not correct? So the right answer here is option A. Because this pillar does not have 15% weightage, it has 45% weightage which is a really high weightage. Now we will move into the index directly. So first of all, this is the first ever edition of this index and from the name itself, you would, uh, uh, you would presume the basic purpose of it. So Department of Food and Public Distribution under the Ministry of Consumer Affairs has launched this index. Uh, the name of this index is Straight Ranking Index for NFSA, that is National Food Security Act. So basically it assesses the implementation of the NFSA by different states. That is the basic objective. Okay, do remember one more thing that targeted public distribution system under the NFSA is the main focus. So how effective is the implementation of TPDS is uh, assessed through this index, okay? Now guys, the index basically has three pillars. First is NFSA coverage, targeting and provisions of the act which has 45% weightage, then delivery platform 50% weightage and nutrition initiatives 5% weightage, okay? So here you can see that in the delivery platform, that is the pillar number two, we have a separate ranking. You will understand this when I show you the ranking because it gets a bit complicated here. Okay, so first of all, let's have a look at the parameters. You can clearly see the three pillars. No need to memorize this, okay? Uh, but in case if you can memorize this much, then it would be really, really good for all of you because in ESI paper, the examiner tends to ask such in-depth questions as well, okay? Because we can see that in each pillar, you have max to max three sub indices, okay? So you can clearly memorize this much. So I think we are clear with the pillars. Now guys, before telling you the rankings, let me inform you that the, cat the states are divided into two categories. I think you all know that whenever we are discussing any national level index, then we have the categorizations of states. So similarly, we have a categorization of states here as well. One is the general category and the second one is the specific category state. In the general category, we have larger states, okay? And one UT as well, that is Delhi is also a part of the general category states. And in the specific category states, we have Himalayan, Northeastern and we have Union Territory, okay? So I hope that you are now clear. So these are the rankings. First of all, the comprehensive country level ranking. So including the states, union territories, all the 34 union territories and states. Yes, 34 union territories and states have been ranked here in this index. 
so odisha was the first and ladakh was at the bottom then when it comes to the general category which includes your major states large states delhi also so in that also odisha has topped and goa is at the bottom then in special category states we have tripura at the first and ladakh at the bottom because ladakh is a union territory it was, therefore it came into this but when we are looking at the overall ranking combining these two then we can see that ladakh is at the bottom now we have the separate ranking for three union territories okay dadra nagar haveli daman and diu puducherry and chandigarh now this separate ranking is specifically uh, specifically for the union territories that have dbt mode okay direct benefit transfer mode okay so for that uh, this separate ranking has been prepared now guys as far as the parameter wise rankings are concerned you can clearly see that in this parameter in the general category jharkhand has stopped whereas haryana was at the bottom in this uh, special category we have tripura at the top and ladakh at the bottom delivery platform so general category bihar is at the top okay and we have uh, the special category states where himachal pradesh has top as far as the general category bottom state is concerned goa is at the bottom and in the special category manipur is at the bottom and no categories no rankings are available for the nutrition initiatives right so this was your nfsa index now i hope that you are clear with the objective of this index now as far as the technicalities of this index are concerned for example if you are concerned about the nutrition initiatives so why was the ranking not given because nutrition initiative is basically a qualitative measure okay so the ranking was not given but yes the assessment was made for assessing the nutrition initiatives that the state governments are uh, taking under the nfsa one of the nutritional initiatives is the fortification of the grains okay like we hear about the fortification of rice fortification of wheat is also done so that is the nutritional initiative but do remember the assessment was also done but the rankings was not prepared for this particular pillar now i hope that the index is clear moving ahead the last question is who among the following are the only winners of the 2022 uh, fields medal which is also known as the nobel prize in mathematics from india so guys here the right answer is akshay venkatesh and manjul bhargav now do remember these two people have not got the awards this year the person who has won the award in 2022 first is marina vizovska from ukraine okay she has won this medal apart from her we have three other winners okay so from french uh, from france we have uh, hugo from korea uh, a korean american is also there and a britisher is also there so a total of four people have got the award this year which is basically the nobel prize in mathematics now do remember that the awards first of all the award was given by international union of mathematics and secondly it was announced on the international congress of mathematics that was held at helsinki the capital of finland one more thing about this award is that the mathematicians above uh, sorry up to the age of 40 are considered for this award and secondly so far since the inception of this award 60 people have got the award and only two people of indian origin have received the award so those two people i have already told you akshay venkatesh and manjul bhargav and do remember he is a male manjul is a male and marina marina has become the second female so far to win this fields medal first one was the uh, iranian maryam okay maryam from iran she was the first woman to win the fields medal and marina from ukraine became the second female to win this medal okay now guys don't shut down the video don't close down the video because the video has not ended a little bit of clarification is needed on this index so guys these are the screenshots of the news channels that i have provided you here to highlight the big mistake that these news channels do or i don't know what is the 
catch here but look at this clipping it states the world's top five livable cities that is the global livability index of the in economist intelligence unit and here you can see the ranking of india okay so here the new delhi's ranking is given at 112 and mumbai is at 170 similar article was published by the times now newspaper and now we have the business standard stating that the bangalore is at 146th position and delhi is somewhere around 140th position so here we have this index coming up again okay so the index that i taught you on june 28th this is the clipping from june 28th video here you can see 140 cities new delhi at 102nd and mumbai at 117th these rankings were given at that point of time by the same organization in the same index now we are coming up with the new ranking that i have already showed shown you in the business standards article so as per the new rankings 173 cities were assessed as opposed to 140 vienna is at the top which uh, stands the same as in the previous index as well damascus the capital of syria is at the bottom but the rankings of indian cities have changed so here you can see delhi is at 140th mumbai 141 chennai 142 ahmedabad 143 bangalore 146 luckily their rankings are very close to each other therefore it would not be that hard for you to remember it but there is a question which one to remember this one or this one so since this is the latest ranking given by EIU, I would recommend you all to memorize this ranking until any clarification comes from the EIU itself. Okay. So that's all for today. I hope that you have enjoyed the video. Thank you so much guys for watching it. If you have any feedback, suggestions, anything, you can mention it in the comment section below.